How's it legends? Welcome to Under Extract. My name is Lutle and I'll be hosting this series. What we essentially trying to achieve with this series is to put out educational content for you legends, our wholesale partners, your cafe baristas, your home baristas, and the general audience is just looking to start making espresso. We'll be talking coffee, brewing coffee, and all things espresso. I invite you to join me in this young dive in the coffee rabbit hole. The goal here is to empower you as we talk coffee in the most simplest, the most approachable, and the most stimulating way possible. How's it legends? Welcome back to Under Extracted and today we'll be doing part two of pack preparation. Cool legends, um, as we spoke in the previous video on basket size and setting a recipe, today we'll be moving on to the next step which is distribution and tamping. Cool, we will be starting with distribution as the first part of this video and we'll be talking about the importance of distribution, talking through the, the various techniques that we recommend, techniques that we use also in our bar and how all of them affect our cup at the end. And we'll be adapting the video in terms of distribution of what you can do at home if you don't have certain um, equipment and if you do have certain tools that you can use in terms of distribution this is a video to talk about what it does for you and what else you could possibly get for your pack preparation station so cool guys the importance of distribution why do we do the step why are we distributing our coffee before we start brewing it or why do we distribute our coffee before we start tamping as well so it allows us to have a more of an even extraction when we bring our espresso the idea here is to well extract our coffees and avoid what we call channeling and channeling is whereby we have an uneven extraction when we brew our coffee Poor puck preparation can result in channeling and is mostly the case in, in, in when we get channeling in our shots. So the idea here is removing that variable, making sure that we have consistent way that we prepare our puck, a consistent way that we distribute our coffee and tamp our coffee. And this allows us to get more consistency and avoid again what we call channeling. The first technique we'll be talking about here is the tapping technique. A lot of people are very familiar with this technique. Um, it is one of the mostly used ways of distributing our coffee in the general sense, whether people that brew coffee at home, cafe baristas as well. This is the most common one that we have. The tapping technique, um, the cool thing about it is that it allows us to have a level bed at, at the top so the idea here is to close down those gaps is to think of your hand as a magnet wherever you tap that's where the coffee will follow and by tapping on the side that are missing coffee you are pulling it to that side and as you can see here we have more of a level top um, it, it, the, the top part of our bed is level though we don't necessarily like this technique a lot as we don't really see what is happening with the depth of the coffee in there we only see the top part and the idea here is that the gaps in between the coffees aren't showing so again it's a technique that is cool to learn and and be able to use though it is not the most consistent um, as it is susceptible to human error it is the, called the WDT mostly, mostly known as that, the WDT. And the, this is what we use normally at a cafe. And the idea behind this tool is that it breaks down clumps while distributing our coffee um, evenly around our bed. So the idea here is that you have your amount of coffee here at the top. You do one tap here on the surface. Everything gets a bit low level. Ideally, you wanna have a funnel on top of your portal filter to just not get any spillage around your surface. So the idea here is to get in, in there, breaking down all those clumps, distributing the coffee quite well. And this really helps when you have relatively cheaper grinders that will be giving you more clumps in your coffee. Um, and the idea here is to get more consistent results with our coffee as we brew it so with the more even distribution of coffee grind uniformity we get um, better results in general when we use this technique um, the tapping technique can be used as well to level the top of our coffee after um, we've used we've used the wdt to allow for a more level tamping afterwards this cool little tool here what you call the ncd nucleus coffee distributor 
um, this is a tool that has kind of made the waves quite recently in, in many cafes and many um, competition stages as well. And yeah, we're very happy with this tool. We use it quite frequently in our, on our bar as well. And this again is, is, is another tool that allows us to remove that variable of poor puck preparation where when we use these tools, um, it allows us to be confident that the puck preparation part is done well and whatever result we get in our espresso is a result of after that station. So we don't really need to, to worry about that. So the cool thing about the NCD, what it does is essentially it distributes the coffee as that's the whole purpose of this tool distributes the top part of the coffee but then also it goes beyond that way it also kind of pushes down the whole depth of the bed and it gets through those gaps that we spoke about earlier that we don't really get to see so guys now that we've done the part of distribution we go into what we call tamping and tamping is the process that we do to apply pressure on our coffee bed and by apply, applying that pressure is to allow resistance when the water drops into the coffee whereas if you don't really tamp the water will be going through the, those coffee particles at a much faster rate that is not ideal you want it to be slower um, and more even so there are three main rules that we need to remember when it comes to the tamping process and those three rules are getting the right size temper a temper that will fit directly in your basket if it's smaller than your than your porta filter your, or rather your basket there's a whole outside section that you'll be missing um, the second rule that we have is level throughout so being level throughout as you're tamping is rather ideal it allows you not to have a skew bed as you as you tamp your coffee you are going directly in and applying um, enough pressure which then takes me to the third one is that the the rule of thumb is having just adequate pressure you won't be throwing numbers on the amount of pressure that you need as you tamp but it needs to be adequate pressure enough pressure where almost the bed starts fighting back there's enough resistance that you've applied and then you are sorted to you can start the brewing process of your coffee. So guys, now you've ground your coffee, you found the right size temper, and now you're ready to start applying that pressure that we spoke about. So the idea here is getting a good grip of your temper, a good grip. Think of it like holding your doorknob and you have your two fingers, your index finger and your thumb on either side of your temper. This will allow you to have enough range of motion, but also enough pressure to, to apply using your arm. So you won't really get a skew bed. So in terms of positioning, positioning your body, your arm, as you're doing this process, um, it varies from, from from person to person, how they feel, in what position do they feel comfortable. But the idea is to just have your arm in a 90 degree angle and this allows you to be not limited in your movement as you tamp your coffee so once you have your arm in that position it allows you to go level straight into your coffee bed and you have the full range of motion as you tamp your coffee now that we've pushed down our coffee we have now pushed and we are now level in the way that we're doing it also do remember as you start out to this process are you still learning how to tamp your coffee to go slow do not rush this process. Um, find how, find where you're comfortable at um, to do this in a an appropriate and proper way to, to to temp your coffee. And now you must be thinking: When do I stop? When we apply this pressure, what tells me to stop? And that is enough pressure that we have. So the idea here: Think of it as when you are pushing against the surface, for example. And you're pushing against the surface you push down and you start feeling like it starts fighting back you've applied enough pressure and it's almost pushing back there's enough resistance and the same applies when you're pushing down on your coffee bed when you feel like there's enough resistance and it's fighting back that should tell you that you've applied adequate pressure you don't really need to push any further um, and if you do mess up and your shot is skewed on other on a, on a, on a side and you feel like you could make it more straight do not tamp again that is a rule do not tamp again we can't really fix it at that point it's either you brew the shot or you chuck it and go over and start again so the idea here is that you only have one chance but again as you learn as you find your rhythm and you get into the routine of tamping properly you get better at it and yeah so just apply those few rules and you will find yourself in a really good spot